So we're still talking about starting off a business from scratch. And we've talked about business structures. We've talked about your business idea. We're now getting into a little bit of nitty gritty and we're talking about your tax payments and specifically around your tax payments for the first two years. So Kingsley, talk to us, tell me what we've got to do. So the key thing here, uh, Lou, is, is knowing when these bills are going to fall and being ready for them. So we've, if we take the extreme example, uh, let's say we've got a business that starts up on the 1st of July, which is quite common because that's obviously, obviously a sort of a smart, convenient time to start a business. We started a business up on the 1st of July, and I'll go with the simplest structure of a sole trader to keep it simple, and also because that gives the most extreme result. Uh, so we've set up as a sole trader and on the 1st of July, and the business has, has gone well. And we, we, we're going through the year, we're making some very good money as it turns out. And ideally you possibly would have switched, but let's say we haven't. Uh, and the problem we have here is of course that this is a new business. You don't have a crystal ball that you know, works. You don't know how much it's going to make. The tax man doesn't know how much it's going to make. And so they're not sending you any bill uh, on the profits as you're making them through the year. Different, of course, to your wages. As you're earning your wage through the year, your employer takes some tax out and sends it off to the tax man uh, many times through the year, possibly even weekly if you're working for a big business. There's nothing happening like that in the first year of your business because no one knows how much that bill should be. We get to the end of that first year and it turns out you've made a very good profit. And particularly if you're with an accountant, a tax agent, you may not have to lodge that tax return till the May the following year, almost two years later from when you first started out in business. And you're busy, you're running this very successful business that's going crazy. Uh, you aren't even thinking about tax, you're just too busy to think about tax. And so it goes on. And then you get into, I don't know, let's say about April, and the accountants now starting to get pretty desperate because they've got to get your tax return lodged by the middle of May. And then come on, get it in, Lou. We need your stuff. And so you finally get your stuff in on the 13th of May and, and your accountant races to get it done and says, Lou, you've got a $25,000 tax bill. And unfortunately, uh, you went for a nice holiday. Remember those, you go overseas holidays, so if we've got to do that again, you've gone for a nice swanky holiday overseas and you bought a new uh, runabout boat to go crabbing. And you did have 25000 a couple of weeks ago, but now you don't. And now you've got this big tax bill and you can't pay that one straight away. So there's a problem. And then the other problem now starts is now, of course, the tax man has got some information about how much your business is made. And the system, in a, you know, slightly simplifying it, says, right, well, we think, Louise, you are going to make that amount of money again. Uh, and... Of course, if we know that you were going to make this kind of money, then in this year, this second year, where you finally done your tax return on your first year's profit, if we know what you were going to make, we would have sent you, this is how the system, once it kicks in, they send you a bill every quarter, once they've got some numbers. If we'd known this, we would have sent you a bill, you know, back in the first, second and third quarter, we have nearly finished the fourth quarter, uh, so we're going to have a big catch up right now. Uh, and that bill will be due, they're due 28 days after the end of each quarter. So that bill will be due on the 28th of July. And suddenly you've got another bill for about $25,000 on top of the first one. And you're struggling to pay the first one. And this one has to be paid not terribly far into the future either. And it's, so, so, you know, it's panic stations, a uh, lot of stress, People often get through it, you know, you, in the end, you can go to the tax man, you can get a payment plan, but of course you've got to jump through the hoops and they sort of, you know, give you a bit of a grilling as to why, you, you know, why is this and how come you haven't planned for it, et cetera, et cetera. Not a pleasant experience. And of course, the, the great frustration from where I sit is when I see these situations happen, almost certainly it's happened for one simple reason. No one told them. They went into business, no one told them this is how the system works. So they've done nothing to get ready. So we uh, would always tell a person new to business, 
Let's set up two bank accounts. So you've got your normal bank account for doing your day-to-day. That's where your customers pay into. That's where you pay out your suppliers, possibly your employees' wages, depending on how big a show you're running. So that's your day-to-day business account. And then we're going to have another one we, we, you know, broadly just call your tax account. And ideally what you're doing is you're looking at your figures. We're going to do another little video shortly on that. Looking at your figures fairly regularly, saying, jeepers, I've made, I've made a $20,000 profit. Uh, I'm in a company, 25% tax rate. I better put $5,000 into my tax account. And you're doing that as you're going through the year, particularly that first year. So even if you are fairly late in getting your tax done, I'm saying, you know, you've got a, a say, a $25,000 tax bill. You say, well, that's all right, because I put 20 grand away in my tax account. And in fact, I've got more in it because there's another, you know, three quarters gone by for the next following year. So as much as it's sort of, oh, I was not expecting that, but it happens though that I still have reserved, literally reserved the cash in a bank account right now. That's right there for me to go and pay that bill on time to the tax man. So there's that doing the the, uh, two bank accounts. The other thing, uh, obviously, that would make sense is not leaving it till May 13. That's not to say that you burst into your account at sort of, you know, one minute past nine or something on July the 1st to get it started. But, you know, August, September, somewhere relatively early uh, in that new financial year, you get your tax done, find out what the figure is. Uh, The accountant can't lodge that return until you say, I'm happy with it and sign the form to send it off. So if it's more than you're expecting, uh, you can wait. uh, And... Again, hopefully you've been reserving the money anyway, but if, if it's a bit short, well, you, you've got a bit, you at least now know early uh, how much it is and you can go and save a bit more up and then uh, lodge when you're in a position uh, to pay it. And between those two uh, things, hopefully you just don't fall into this situation. Tragically, I've seen people that have uh, had pretty good businesses gone great for those, first, and, in, in, and in some cases they've decided to just give up when this has happened to them, when arguably possibly they could have got through it, but it's just the stress and the worry and of, of suddenly having all these tax debts and whatever, oh, that's it, oh, man, I'm not doing uh, small business anymore, and they quit uh, on a problem that was very, very preventable. Yeah, and we do recommend that you have a chat with your accountant about setting that money aside because obviously with each business structure, there are different tax rates. So it is important to make the plans to do the money aside part because that um, does save lots of people. All right, Kingsley, thank you very much for that one. All right, Luke.